We're going to go right into Scripture this morning. You've been told a couple of times already. I'm going to just share it one more time. Today is indeed Missions Sunday here at our church. So we're going to take a look this morning at the role that each of us should be carrying as a missionary. And we'll look at how we can support missionaries and ministries. And how each of us are called to witness and to minister to the people around us. We're going to start in Matthew 28 this morning. Should be some pretty familiar verses to us. 28, 18, and 20. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to Me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. One other Scripture for you this morning. Mark 16.15 He said to them, Go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. I want to point out something about these two Scriptures that we just read this morning. Both of these Scriptures are addressed to a group of people called them. We read it in Matthew. Jesus came to them and said, verse 20, teach them to obey everything. Mark 16, He said to them, go into all the world. Both of these Scriptures are addressed to them. Of course, we know that in both of these Scriptures, the them that He's referring to here is His disciples. Jesus is speaking to His disciples. He's giving them instructions to follow. He's giving them guidance and direction as to what to do. He's sending them out into the world to minister to everyone that they come in contact with. Everyone that they see. Let's take a a, a little bit of a closer look at Matthew this morning. First of all, most of us know this portion of Scripture as the Great Commission, right? That's how we refer to this section of Scripture. Or at least that's what most of our modern translations will title this portion of Scripture. The Great Commission. If it's the Great Commission, then hopefully we know and understand what a commission is. Do we know what a commission is this morning? In essence, in its simplest form, a commission is a command. It's a directive. It's an authoritative directive to go and do on another's behalf. So if you have been commissioned to do something, it means that someone has given you instruction and the authority to represent them in completing a given task. So what does that mean to us when we talk about the Great Commission? In this case, Jesus is giving His disciples the direction and the authority that they need to go into the world and minister in His name. Leading others to live a Christ-centered life. Matthew 28, 18, the first part of what we read, Jesus makes it clear that He is able to do this because He says these words, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to Me. So He has been given authority and Jesus was now giving that authority, passing it on to His disciples. Go and do as I have told you to do is what He was instructing them. What is it that He's giving them the power and authority to do? Our text said, go and make disciples of all nations. I'm giving you the power. Jesus is saying this. I'm giving you the power and the authority to do this. Now go and do it. Go and make disciples. And then He continues on. He gives further instructions. He says, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. 
and teaching them, there's that them again, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. So let's look at a couple of these verses real quick today. Verse 20 stands out to me. It says, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Verse 19, Jesus said, make disciples. Verse 20, Jesus said, teach them to obey. So who truly is the them that these Scriptures refer to this morning? It really is us. The them that we read about here is us. You and I. All of us sitting in this room this morning. If we are born again, if we are followers of Jesus Christ, then we are a them. And we're called to be a disciple and to make disciples for Jesus. If, we're, if we are a disciple, then we have given, been given very plain instruction. We have been told to go into all the world and make other disciples. Or as Mark said, go and preach the Word. Go into all of the world and preach the good news. As believers, as disciples in Jesus, we have an obligation. We have a duty to share the Gospel message with others. Remember that Great Commission is a command. Go and do this. It didn't say go and do it if you feel like it. Go and do it if somebody else tells you to. It says go and do this. Go make disciples. Go teach them to obey. Go tell them to obey every command I have given you. To obey Scripture. Turn, if you will, if you still have your Bible open, turn over to Acts chapter 1. Another piece of Scripture I want to share with you this morning. Here, Jesus is telling us who is going to do the witnessing and where the witnessing is going to be done. Let me read for you this morning. Acts chapter 1, verses 7 and 8. He said to them, there's that phrase again, to them, it is not for you to know the times or the dates the Father has set by His own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be My witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. I want you to understand something this morning. We, in this room, any one of us as individuals, we, in and of ourselves, are absolutely powerless to accomplish anything for the Kingdom of Christ. By ourselves, we are powerless to accomplish anything for the Kingdom. But, the One who has all authority in heaven and earth told us that the power will come on us when we receive the Holy Spirit into our lives. As believers, the Holy Spirit lives within us. And the Holy Spirit is what gives us power to go out to the ends of the earth to witness, to minister, to encourage other people in the name of Jesus Christ. Again, He told them, Them. And who is the them but the disciples? And who are the disciples but us? Not just the 11 or 12 guys He had by His side. We're His disciples as well. When we've accepted Christ into our life, when we've chosen to follow Him, we are one of His disciples. So the command is for us today as well. The Holy Spirit gives us the power to be the witnesses that we are called to be. I got to tell you this morning, too many of us come up with excuse after excuse when it comes to witnessing to people. When it comes to reaching out to people and telling them about Jesus. We tend to say, I can't do that. That's not who I am. I I, I don't know how. I'm afraid. I, I don't know enough. 
That's, that's not part of my character or, or, or my nature. We come up with all kinds of excuses as to why not to share the Gospel instead of sharing as we are told to share. According to what we just read in Acts, it's not about what we can or cannot do. It's about the power of the Holy Spirit working in and through us to minister to others. See, we are but vessels that God uses. Vessels. Take this cup as an example this morning. This cup is a vessel. Right now, it's an empty vessel. There's nothing in it. It's empty. It doesn't contain anything. But if we were to take this cup and we were to fill this cup with water, the cup changes a little bit. See, right now, this cup carries life-giving, thirst-quenching liquid to whoever drinks it. This cup doesn't say, I don't know how to hold the liquid. This cup doesn't say, I'm not good enough to hold the liquid. This cup doesn't say, I can't hold the liquid. This cup doesn't say, it's not in my nature to hold the liquid. The cup is a vessel that holds the liquid. The cup is a vessel. And when it is filled in let me add, filled with the right thing, when it is filled, it brings with it life. That vessel carries life. We in this room, you and I, are vessels that God fills with the Holy Spirit. We are vessels that He fills and uses to bring life-giving thirst quenching living water to everyone around us. Everyone. Do we understand the concept of being a vessel this morning? Yes, every one of us are created differently. Every one of us have different giftings, different talents and abilities that God has given to us. That's why there's no one right way to witness or to minister or to reach out to the lost. Some people are indeed best standing on street corners shouting at the top of their lungs and telling everybody about who Jesus is. Others might be a little less outgoing, but outgoing individuals nonetheless, and they're willing to talk to complete strangers while standing in line at the store. Still others might need some sort of an organized event to feel like they can reach out and witness to people. Or maybe it even means building a relationship with someone over an extended period of time. All of these are different ways to witness to people around us. What we really need, what it really takes, is a willing heart. One that says, yes, Lord. I am willing to be the vessel that You want me to be. To be filled with Your Spirit and to spread the Gospel to the ends of the earth. To carry that life-giving water to everyone that I see. It's not by our own power, our own strength, our own authority that we witness. It's because the Holy Spirit fills us and works through us that we can minister to others. Acts chapter 1 also tells us something else in verse 8. It says, You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. See, it actually tells us where to witness. It starts at home and then it goes to the very ends of the earth. See, that's what Jerusalem was for most of the people that were being addressed here. It was their home. It was a place for them to start. So the ministry started in their home, and then from there it went out to the surrounding areas 
to, to Judea and to Samaria. It went on and on from there. If we were to think about it for ourselves, it would be like saying it starts in our home and then it goes to Geneva and St. Charles or Illinois and then Iowa. It starts at home and then it spreads out from there even to the very ends of the earth. How do we witness to the ends of the earth? I'm glad you asked. That's a good question this morning. Well, first of all, we could go there, right? God sends people to all kinds of places to minister. In fact, God has used people from this very church, this very congregation, to minister around the world. We have sent people out on short-term missions trips over the years, and they've gone to several different countries across the globe. There are those from this very church who have been called into missions and have dedicated their lives to going out and preaching the Gospel. They've responded to that call that God has given them. So they have gone to the very ends of the earth to speak the truth and to share the Gospel with others. That's one avenue that we can reach the ends of the earth. Another avenue is by supporting those that go. We can be a part of it by supporting people. See, when someone is called to the missions field, for the most part, most of the time, they have to raise their own support in order to go. I hope we understand that when someone chooses to be a missionary, nobody is writing them a paycheck every week. They are supported by local churches and other organizations like you and I, like this church body. We support them so they can go out and minister the Gospel to the very ends of the earth. They sacrifice. They give up their comforts. They give up the, their com- the, the things they're used to day after day. And they make a sacrifice to go out to spread the Gospel. And they cannot do that without support. They cannot do that without our support. We alone may not be able to meet every need of a missionary and all the expenses they have for a given period of time, but when we work together, we can make a huge impact on meeting the needs of those that are called to go. From the day that this church opened its doors, about 35 years ago now, support missionaries has been a priority of ours. It has always been a focus of ours. We have a list right now of about 25 missionaries and ministries that we support on a monthly basis. Because we give, because we support others, the Gospel is being preached in Romania, Indonesia, Japan, China, the U.S., just to name a few because of our willingness to give and to support. Our commitment to supporting each and every one of these individuals is a priority to us. It, it's very important as a church, as a leadership, for us to support them on a regular, ongoing basis. In fact, it is such a priority to us that we make sure our commitment to our missionaries, our extension of the church, we make sure that the support is given and met every single month, no matter what. Even if that means we have to dip into another fund somewhere to cover our pledge to our missionaries. It is a priority to us. There's another avenue that we can use to minister to the ends of the earth, and that's by prayer. Those that go, those that are on the missions field, need prayer. They need God's wisdom. They need God's protection. They need God's provision. On and on, they need to see God's hand upon them, encouraging them, strengthening them. We need to keep 
those missionaries, all missionaries lifted before the Lord in prayer. We sitting here in our comfortable little church in Batavia have no idea what some of these people face day after day after day. Some of them, their lives are threatened on a daily basis. We need to keep them in prayer constantly. This morning I read to you Scripture from Matthew. And in Matthew we read that Jesus was speaking to them or us about this call, this great commission that is put out before us, this charge that He has given us. By making disciples, we get to teach them or others to follow the commands of the Lord. We get to encourage them and they in turn get to minister to others and make other disciples and encourage them, Lord. Mark's Gospel, as we read, echoes those words telling them, go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. We've explored the idea that this them is really us. It's a circle. Minister to them. Them will make disciples. Disciples will talk to them. It's a constant circle of ministry to others around us. In Acts, we read about who we are called to teach or to witness to. Our family, our neighbors, even to those that we have never ever met before or maybe even to those that we never will meet face to face. All of this, all of us in one way or another are called to witness and minister the Gospel of Jesus from our homes to the very ends of the earth. This morning, we have with us several representatives from CMA this morning. Kurt, where are you at? I know you're out there somewhere. Come on up. Ride until they come to the end of the 
That's just a, 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 just a quick snippet of, of what CMA is all about. Um, the, the key is, uh, hello, can you hear me? Uh, the key um, to this whole organization is we're one of them. As Pastor Kurt uh, explained, um, we, are, uh, we all sit in churches on Sundays. Uh, and we, um, uh, we listen to the gospel, we listen to the teaching, but the, the command, as Pastor Kurt said, is to go out. Um, and uh, we, I wear a patch, and several other people wear a patch on their back uh, of their colors. Uh, the church has left the building. Because the church, uh, it's kind of like, a, there's an analogy that was kind of, I just heard about, it, is, is like a box of matches. You know, we're all one of those matches inside that box. And the only way that we can actually bring light to this world is take that match out of the box, strike it someplace, and bring some light to, to the world. I mean, that's what we're commanded to do. Um, Rich and Mary, um, as you know, are parts of your church, and a lot of times they may be not here on Sundays. Um, so what we try to do is we try to go to our uh, chapter members' churches and explain to, you know, their co-worshippers of, of why they're not here on Sunday. So Rich, yeah, he rides a motorcycle. And Mary hops on the back occasionally, and, and they go out for a ride. But they're going out for a ride for a purpose. They're going out to share the gospel with others. So, yes, it's, it's a great vessel or we're a great vessel but we're wrapped in leather and you know some of us are half full some of our uh, some of us are beginning to to go out and preach but that's what we do we disciple each other so that we can go out and learn and teach and bring that good news to others so um just a real quick thing um uh, our verse uh, that uh, i chose for for our chapter um, this year is uh, whom shall I send? Send me. So that's kind of what, what we've kind of geared our chapter to. So, um, so the Ministry of Christian Motorcyclists Association, CMA, was founded back in 1975 with a specific reason and a specific desire to reach out to others in the motorcycling community. Uh, Pastor Herb Shreve out of Arkansas um, uh, was... Um, uh, he had an issue with his son, and he felt that the only way that he could reconnect with his son is to buy a motorcycle. And he felt that with buying a motorcycle, there was a whole part of this world that wasn't being touched with the gospel. I mean, we all know about the Hells Angels and the Outlaws and some of these 
darker, kind of scary parts of the motorcycling community, who's going to minister to those people? We have missionaries that go and, and feed the homeless, and we have missionaries that go and talk to street people and, and, and such. So this gentleman, Herb Shreve, went ahead and said, I'm going to go out and, and uh, approach the motorcycling community. So, um, um, so the, 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 the whole thing was to reach out, uh, reach out to others with the love of Jesus. From the very beginning, the vision of CMA was about, and our motto is, changing the world one heart at a time. So we understand that no one person or organization is capable of fulfilling that command alone. So, it, you know, to try to go out to the world, you, you, your church cannot go out to the world by themselves. You would go ahead and you connect with other missionaries. You go ahead and, and you support other organizations. So we understand that, that no one person or organization is capable of fulfilling that command. So we firmly believe that we still must do our part. So the Christian Motorcyclist Association, and, you, and if you noticed up on the film, has partners, partnered with three other ministries. Together we've been able to touch all but four nations in this world with the gospel message of salvation through Jesus Christ. CMA is mainly in an evangelistic ministry. We are not a fundraising organization. We have a, a thing that we call Run for the Sun that we go ahead and we do one, one, uh, one time a year where our, 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 our members of our, of our community, our, our chapters and, and such, go out and we raise funds through, through uh, selling things or uh, reaching out to our fin friends and families and businesses and we raise funds for Run for the Sun. And that's, make sure that you understand, Sun is not S-U-N, but S-O-N, God's Son. Um, so uh, we get involved once a year and, uh, and, and the money that we raise does not go to support the, 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 the actual ministry, the, the, the lights and the salaries of, of CMA um, and people. It, 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 all of it, 100% goes out to reaching the world one heart, heart at a time. Um, none of the money, like I said, is raised, that, that is raised, is used to fund the day-to-day -day operation. Over the past 29 years since we started Run for the Sun, CMA has seen over 22 and a half million people profess acceptance of Jesus Christ as direct results of the outreaches for Run for the Sun. 40% of the money that we raise goes to our partners. Um, basically, I'm sorry, 40% of the Run for the Sun goes to evangelistic outreach to bikers and others throughout the, uh, the USA and around the CMA involved in rallies, events, and various motorcycle organizations. So what we do is we keep 40% here in the United States and we go ahead and we support, um, everybody's probably heard of Sturgis or Laconia or Daytona or uh, all these other different motorcycle rallies and what we do is we go ahead and we provide funds for tracks and handouts and we have uh, Bibles out on the back uh, table um, that we go ahead and we provide to uh, those that, that need them uh, at these uh, events. Um, so 40% of that money goes for outreach. Um, CMA serves motorcyclists and always looks for opportunities to let our light shine. CMA strives to demonstrate and share the unconditional love of Christ. The Son of Man did not come to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for money, Matthew 20, 28. With that, the three ministries that we support, one, the first one is Missionary Ventures. 20% of that 100% of the Run for the Sun goes to Missionary Ventures International. Through Missionary Ventures, as you saw on the film, CMA has been supplying motorcycles, bicycles, and other forms of transportation to the pastors and evangelists around the world. CMA has placed 5,769 motorcycles, 
6,500 bikes, 28 boats, 31 horses, one camel, two snowmobiles, three horses and buggies. And there were a couple boats in there too for some of the islands. And they work within 105 com uh, countries. These vehicles uh, go to pastors and evangelists to assist them in planting new churches and going into new areas with the gospel. As many as 12 new churches are, planted, are being planted with the use of just one motorcycle. If you figure that the pastor that's down in South America who lives 50 miles away, he used to walk, you know, maybe a whole day to get to where he wants to church or plant a church. So now this pastor, by giving him a motorcycle, he goes ahead and he can go ahead and not only hit that one place 50 miles away, but go ahead and hit two or three more churches and advance that gospel so much easier, quicker, faster. Uh, typically, a new church um, plant sees at least 100 people come to Christ within the first year. The second ministry that we support is the Jesus Film Project. The mission of the Jesus Film Project is to provide people with a life-changing encounter with Jesus through film. To date, the Jesus Film has been translated into 1,420 languages and shown in over 200 countries. The, the video clip that Pastor Kurt showed was about um, the Indian uh, preacher who was trying to um, work through all the dialects that, uh, that they have in India. Um, so if you were going to go ahead and try to tell the story to somebody that can't read um, the Bible, how would you do that? You can tell somebody, but visually, I mean, so many people are, are visual learners, correct? So why not go ahead and watch the story of Jesus on, on, a, on a video screen? So they get a generator, they go ahead and they get the, uh, a DVD projector, throw it on the back of uh, a motorcycle or some way to get it out into these, these locations. They throw up a screen, and then they go ahead and show the story of Jesus to hundreds and thousands of people in their language. Um, let's see. Uh, okay. uh, for every dollar invested in the Jesus film, historically, at least two, 10 people worldwide see the film and one person accepts Christ. Approximately 119 million have viewed the film. And about 12 million people have uh, made decisions for Christ as a direct result of the CMA Run for the Sun gift. It's now, it's now being reported. It used to be that for every dollar that we raise to go out um, to, uh, to the world, it was for every dollar, one soul is saved. Now with this, this further relationship building that we are with our, our team members, it's actually now up to three. So every dollar that we see, that we raise, we see three lives saved. Um, through our partnership with Jesus Film Project, these funds have been used to train church planters, assist in developing 36 new language translations, and contributed finisher grants for 468 more translations of the Jesus Film. Run for the Sun have equipped the Jesus Film teams in 97 countries with equipment, film prints, DVDs, the ve and vehicles that together help get the good news of Jesus Christ to some of the most remote areas in the world. The last um, mi um, ministry partner that we support is um, Open Doors Ministries. For 62 years, Open Doors have been committed to working in 60 of the most oppressive and dangerous countries in the world, such as North Korea, Syria, and Nigeria. Actually, it, uh, some of us had gone to our national rally, and uh, it was reported by the Open Doors uh, director that right now, today, that the fastest growing Christian population is in Iran, one of the most oppressive areas around. Um, Open Doors encourages persecuted Christians to stand strong and equips them to shine the light of Christ in these dark places. Open Door supports and strengthens, strengthens suffering believers by providing Bibles and gospel development resources. 
CMA partnership with Open Doors has made a huge impact in the lives of countless faithful Christians. Since Run for the Sun began in the mid-1980s, CMA, through its partnership with Open Doors, have distributed over 2.6 million Bibles in many languages. So I, basically, that kind of gives you an overview of what the CMA is about. The key is that we go out and we um, make ourselves available. We do a lot of volunteer work. We show up at rallies and we park bikes. We direct traffic. But the key is that we do this by volunteering to try to uh, develop a relationship with the organization to um, uh, obtain the opportunity to speak. And when I say speak, I mean it could start off with just a prayer or go ahead and actually hold a, uh, uh, an actual church service. In February, um, in February, uh, yeah, the end of January actually, and in February, there's two, two rallies that we, we uh, the one is in St. Charles here, it's a swap meet, and, and Danny, our past, uh, uh, our past uh, 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 chaplain, uh, sorry, um, uh, we actually go ahead and, and based on our commitment of always being there to serve, we actually go ahead and hold a Sunday morning service for the vendors and also the attendees. Um, the International Bike Show, which is held in February around, around the country, uh, we also go ahead and we have a, um, a church service, again, for the vendors and, and anybody who wants to show up. Um, one of the neatest stories is um, just recently, it just happened, um, and I'll share this and then we'll finish. But um, uh, part of our, our thing is, is, is always making ourselves try to be available for those that are in need. Well, while we're driving down the road, we stop for gas and people come up to us because of the cross on our back and ask for prayer. Um, numerous times we've, we've um, uh, uh, been there just for this uh, split second opportunity to share the good news with somebody that's having a hard day. Um, just to, to uh, there was a, a, one of our past chapter members had gone to visit his mother in a rehab facility. And there was a biker that was there that had been involved in a very, very serious motorcycle accident. And, um, uh, and, and he was from a biking community that would be not one of those good ones, something like the Hell's Angels or something similar. And he was in traction, casts all over the place. The guy should have died. But one of our members had an opportunity to go up to him and say, hey, I, you know, I, I see that you're suffering. I'm a biker. You're a biker. Can I pray for you? Um, so to make a long story shorter, um, the gentleman prayed for him. Uh, we were at a, um, a motorcycle barbecue uh, for one of these organizations uh, just recently. And um, he, the gentleman, who, he was walking with a limp, and uh, he's walking today. And, and he came up and said, um, came up to us, and he said, hey, he says, one of our brothers just died. And we'd like to invite you to the clubhouse and say a prayer for his family and, and, and this gentleman. Now, these clubhouses, as you know, are, are not the best place. They're, they're very dark, not light dark, but dark where there's a lot of um, bad things that can happen. Invited to these clubhouses all the time, to, and we've developed these relationships to go into these dark places. But to be invited to come to a clubhouse and to be able to say a prayer for a gentleman that passed away, it just blew my mind. I mean, that's what we're out there to do. So um, we said the prayer. It, it, it was amazing that there was, Lance, I don't know, how, a couple hundred people in the clubhouse um, all bowed their heads and had an opportunity just for that split second. You know, we don't know what happened next but for a split second, they turned their eyes to God. Um, the key thing is we all are 
seed planters. We are the waterers. We're the cultivators. We don't know if you are going to be the harvester of that seed. But we are commanded, as Pastor Kurt says, to go out. Bring that light. Bring that matchstick out of these doors. Leave the building and bring the good news to others. So um, that's what CMA tries to do. That's what we are doing. And we've been there since 1975, and we will continue to do that. So whom shall I send? Send us. We're sent out.